Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We just whooped on Maylene. But I'm not sure what to do. Maybe the menu can help? Oh. Okay. Well, let's do that. And upon departure of the Veilstone Gym, we are Tetris into by Dawn. She dropped her Pokedex by accident, and Team Galactic took it. What a dummy. <laughs> and now they won't give it back. Well, Dawn, you shouldn't be such a butterfingers. So, something interesting. This is something that you can only do when you collect badges, and you are in handheld mode. You can polish your badges. So when you're in handheld mode, rub your little tootsies all over them beautiful badges, and they'll sparkle and shine. Beautiful. And another thing that we can do, now that we have access to this menu, after the third gym, I think, you get access to the mystery gift, which we will get via the worldwide web. And in doing so, we can get two gifts right now. We can get the Manaphy Egg Gift. I believe this is available until the end of February 2022. And then the Clothing Gift. So let's go ahead and get the Manaphy Gift. This is so exciting. It's like a shooting star being delivered to us. It's going to explode with happiness. And there it is, everybody. Very creepy looking, strange manatee egg. So there it is, we have it. And now we can do the clothing gift. This one's actually is more fun for this episode in particular. I like that our gifts kind of explode from the sky like maybe an Animal Crossing. Thankfully we don't have to shoot them down, they just come right to our switch, which is very nice. So what kind of clothing are we going to get? Hmm. Platinum style, huh? Well, it's not quite Gangnam style, but whatever. So anyway, the reason why I wanted to get that right here right now is because I forget what building it is. I think it's the one that looks like a little fairy. It certainly is. This is what I thought I was going to be able to do earlier, but I forgot. All the clothing that you get in this game for some reason is referred to as a style. So I guess I could have done this previously, but I didn't know the order of operations. So here we go. Nope, that's the wrong button. Let's try again. I'm gonna change my style. Let's, uh, let's bundle up. It's a little chilly outside. So this is nice. The platinum style is as it says on the tin, the outfit worn by Don and whatever the male character's name is, Lucas, in Pokemon Platinum. So very nice. So we need to go and visit the warehouse because we might be able to get ourselves a TM for fly. That sounds pretty dope. I was going to say pretty fly, but it, that's kind of redundant. Whatever. I'm just having fun with words, ladies and gentlemen. But here we go. Now, before we do that, though, let's check out our Pokemon. <laughs> our team's doing great. So I probably should have gone to the Pokemon Center first. But let's go ahead and reassemble our team. Everybody that fought in the gym battle is already still a part of the team in various levels of health. But we're going to mix things up and try to get some some additional levels for maybe our weaker Pokemon. We're going to give Scarlet her first chance at action and Steven as well. Steven's actually going to be a very valuable team member. Oops, a little surprise of that box. Not really. It's actually a good opportunity for me to use that box. I made a box just for legendaries, which I don't have any of yet, but I have an egg. So there is a there's an opportunity for legendaries. I should probably heal though. That sounds like a good idea, right? I forget where the Pokemon Center is. Here it is. Get out of the way, Charlie. Just a hint for the upcoming gym, nerd. You may want to train some grass and or electric types. Hmm. Little nudge in the right direction. For now, I'm just having, I'm just having a good heckin' time, just playing around and using what I have available to me. Also, Lucas in the platinum style, besides looking fly, as we search for fly, 
Very cute. The chibi style, very cute. Let's go ahead and talk to Dawn. See if we can get her Pokedex that she somehow accidentally lost back for her. It's very convenient. So we're gonna do a double battle here with good old Dawn. Apparently she thinks that we're the dream team, but uh, well, pretty sure we don't need Dawn for that. But anyway, another opportunity to team up with Dawn as we fight the Team Galactic Goons, the twins. So she's got a Clefairy. And we're gonna use Brandy. So oddly enough, you would think that you're gonna be spending a decent amount of time, ooh, a decent amount of time in Veilstone City, but this is just kind of more of a speed bump. There is a Galactic hideout in this city in that building that we walked past, where they have the warehouse. But we're not going to be spending a ton of time in here. If you remember, when we were by Cafe Cabin, there was a bit of a blockade in the road, and that's something that we need to take care of. So we're going to lean more into that direction. Also, having Psychic on Brandy is super good. Confusion just wasn't quite cutting it. A bit of a waste of a slot because Extrasensory was right on the way, but, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it, everybody. But lots of levels for everybody. We're keeping things going. Gonna keep mixing the team up. Beautifly's gonna use Turd Cutter on uh, Clefairy. It's not very effective on us, though. So you can back off. Krogunk is a cool Pokemon. I considered putting Krogunk on the team a little bit, but... I didn't really have a good spot for it, so I chose not to. Let's get Craig in there. We've got Pokemon that are kind of tweeners right now. On the verge of hitting their first evolution and or their third, or I guess second, to their third phase, I should say that. This is a bit of a bold move though, because that Beautifly does have Mega Drain, which I hope that we can get Bart something like that sometime soon. Ooh, he's showing us his butt. They are really teeing off on Don's Clefairy. Must have said something naughty. But the story continues. We do have Pokemon that hopefully we'll be leveling up soon. All of my speed encumbered Pokemon, which is great. Being slower than literally everything I fight. Even my Pokemon that are, you know, for all intents and purposes quicker, are not in this case because of their natures. But yeah, seems like these guys just kind of got the run-of-the-mill standard issue Team Galactic Pokemon. They were at least nice enough to let them have the evolved forms of Syl and Cascoon, so... Maybe they worked overtime and were rewarded for their efforts. Is Disarming Voice the only thing this Clefairy knows? Its contributions are kind of middling. I'm not very pleased, Dawn. Although I do like the bow on the back of the fairy. That's nice. Nice little touch. But is that a bow? Like, if you think about it, the same thing with, like, um, Papini and its weird little, like, ponytail. Does that mean that Clefairy just has, like, a bow-shaped, like, skin coming out of its back? Ew. That's gross. Anyway, down goes the grunts. These goons are old news. The warehouse is ours for the picking, and we didn't even need two-day delivery. That's right. So it looks like they are very understanding that the universe is ever-expanding. So who knows what Pokemon we'll find in deep outer space. So anyway, Here's your hint. This is your plot device. These guys are to give you some exposition to tell you to head to Pastoria City. So we're gonna do that in a moment, but first, thank you sincerely. If you hadn't thanked us sincerely, I would have taken that Pokedex right back. Ooh, 
If you if you'd lost it, what? Ooh, why did you say ew? That makes me feel uncomfortable. So in Pastoria City, seems like the Galactic Grunts have staked the claim, and there's also something called the Great Marsh. I wonder what that could be like. However, we will not be doing that yet because one of the most important things in the entire game is right here. So you're gonna definitely wanna grab this TM94. It is also a Pokatch HM. What do you have to say for yourself? That's right. Ooh, that seems a little suspicious. A lot of talk about Pastoria City. Maybe we should head there. Sounds like a good time, right? I don't quite know where it is. Because it's been a long time since I've played this game. Literally. For recording, but also... This story is lost on me. So let's see what this sign says. Uh, I don't know... Is that... Is, we'll just go this way. We came in... Heading east, so... Maybe this is the right way to go. This looks right, maybe? I'm assuming we're gonna start fighting people. Anytime you can fight somebody, that must mean you're going the right way. Throwing hands is definitely an indicator of heading in the right direction. This part of the game is a little... I don't know. I feel like the middle of the, this game in particular is kind of slow. <clears throat> it's not bad, but it does take a little bit to get to the meat and potatoes of what you're trying to do. I guess that can kind of be said for any Pokemon game. It's not going to be like non-stop action all the time. That would be unfair. But... There are still some times, like when I'm playing through this one, and I'm just like, what are we doing? Thankfully though, things do kick it up a little bit. Get a little more heated in Pastoria City. They did mention the Great Marsh, which is a cool place for us to visit. Apparently, Mr. Viss is flat on the bottom. Just like a flat tire. Flat tire has no pro is no problem because it's only flat on the bottom. Oh, come on. Heck off. We're just trying to reassure Mr. Vest that things are okay. There we go. Wonderful. So we're gonna try to get some levels for these weaker members of our team. We should be pretty close to some evolutions, which is fun. Those are as exciting, right? And this should be a decent fight for Craig as well. If we can withstand the special attack of Kadabra. Oh, don't you do it. Do not. Don't disable assurance. That's okay. Well, great. I knew that was going to happen, but I wanted to play it up for the crowd to make it seem like... Okay. <laughs> Craig wants to be petted. Yeah, that's one of the things that kind of is weird to me. Are those little messages that they tell you from your Pokemon. Craig wants to be petted or they're going to tough it out for you. Like, I kind of cheesed that battle with Maylene. Having Charlie hanging for one last HP. Yeah, that, that was kind of lame. But anyway, here's the first look at Scarlet the Skaroopy. A new Pokemon to this game. A pretty cute and cool one. We like it. But yeah, everybody's getting kind of close to the level 30 threshold, which is nice. The experience all is not the worst thing. It does even things up a little bit. And that's what you get for having bangs, so... You didn't have a psychic connection for somebody to tell you to get a better haircut. So we're gonna collect some berries. Yes, everybody is kind of leveling up, rounding out into form 
I don't know if this is where I'm supposed to be going, so I'm actually gonna check my map here in a moment. My map. Here's the our first look at citrus berries. Those are the upgraded version of orange berries. If you hold them, you'll gain 30 HP back instead of 10, which is quite nice. All right, let's check the town map. Make our way to Pastoria City. We are heading south. And it looks like we are on the way. Excellent. Thankfully, that arrow confirmed that we are not complete fools. And there's a cave here. What is this? The Ruined Maniac Cave. He's a maniac. A maniac for sure. And he's dancing like he's never danced before. But in the process, we're going to grab Dig and talk to this gentleman. He doesn't care. See, he is so full of confidence that he doesn't care what people call him. He's fascinated by the unknown. Okay, great. So he's asking us to go and catch an unknown. You at least need to see an unknown if you can. You don't necessarily need to catch one, but seeing one is part of completing the national decks. So you'll want to do that. There will be an opportunity to do so before too long. But first, an X special defense, which we probably won't use. I've actually used more special items in this game than I have in pretty much any other Pokemon game that I've ever played combined. That's not a joke. So we're going to be charged by P.I. Carlos. I like his trench coat. He's got a Goldeen. Goldeen sucks. It's one of those kind of forgettable Pokemon. Just kind of flopping around like fish. I feel like a private investigator would want to have something a little bit, I don't know, more sneaky snake. So once again, like I mentioned before, start training up them grass types, those electric types. You'll thank me for it later. Roughly in about one town. You're welcome. Just a bit of a heads up if you're not ahead of me in the game. Also didn't really notice this. Steven, very spiky butt. Is that just like matted fur? Like has no one brushed Steven in a good while? All right. I get the, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about these weird little inclusions. They feel about as weird as having three Goldeens. These little extra words of inclusion that I don't, I don't know if it really moves the needle for me. Like I don't feel more, I don't feel bonded more to these colorful ones and zeros in comparison to the other ones in this game. I don't know. But P.I. Carlos is no match. He didn't do his research. Tisk test. There's a lot of battles on the way to Pastoria, so just a heads up. Hopefully you guys enjoy these battles as much as I do. We're going to see what this nerd has in store for us. He's a Ponyta. When I think of Ponyta, I think of kind of Pokemon Snap. I don't really have anything that's good against the Ponyta, unfortunately, because my two water types are not present on the team, but we'll give Miguel some love. When in doubt, brute force it out. And now that I have the Shell Bell on Miguel, using Brave Bird is nice because it doesn't quite do as much recoil damage. But Ponyta does make me think of Pokemon Snap and like Rapid Dash running around the, the Magma level. That was probably one of my favorite levels. I own the second Pokemon Snap, the the new Pokemon Snap. I haven't played it yet. Maybe someday. But I do remember really enjoying the original one for the Nintendo 64. Played that one quite a bit. So not as bad with the recoil. It's still not great, but being able to dunk on these Ponytaws nice. I just wish that the level curve in this game, now that I look at Ponyta only being a level 20, was more balanced. Like, I don't feel like I've, I haven't grinded. I literally have only fought 
trainers and then the occasional wild Pokemon that I accidentally don't mean to fight. And then you get some experience when you catch, like from Pokemon Let's Go. But in general, I'm not trying to overdo it here. I'm trying to swap my team out and actually underlevel myself on purpose. And I still feel like, you know, I'm a cut above. This game is already pretty easy, so I'm not trying to make it easier. And that's nice. It's good that they gave Flame Charge to Ponyta, because it didn't really make sense for it to be a move that Zeb Strika or whatever its first form is, unless that is the first form. It didn't really make a lot of sense for it to know that, not a fire type. It being an electric type knew it. It was like one of the first moves it could learn, and I thought that was cool. But it didn't quite make sense to me. However, on Ponyta, it makes complete sense. Who doesn't want a fast fire horse? You should be envious of our Pokedex. And we can hold on to ours, unlike Dawn, because she's a good old Butterfingus. So this lattice of fencing, I'm not entirely sure. Who built this? Why does it look like this? Why are there people just kind of hanging out in these fences trying to fight us? Are these questions for another day? Anyway, here's War Madam. Or War Madame, however you say it. I think War Madam makes more sense given that it's supposed to be the female orientation. So in this case, War Madam is one of the two evolutions of Burmy. If you have a female Burmy, which looks like a uh, kind of turdish, if I have to say, and you level it up to a certain point, I don't know what the level is, it will evolve into War Madam. If it's female, if it's male, it evolves into something else. I don't know if we've seen it yet, so I won't say it. But depending on where you evolve, War Madam, is a classifying feature on how it's going to look, which I think is kind of neat. It changes its appearance based on where geographically you level it up. So there's a few different types of War Madams that you can have, which I think is kind of cool. We might have a level up that leads to an evolution right now. We do! Steven! Onto his final evolution, here we go. This is gonna be very useful for the upcoming gym. And I think one of the coolest looking Pokemon in Diamond and Pearl. So here we go. I think the ears look a little misplaced. But we have a Lux right now with its very grumpy eyes. But also very cool. It looks kind of, looks like a Dragon Ball Z character. All right, here we go. Lux Ray, the Gleam Eyes Pokemon. I have no idea what that means. It has eyes that can see through anything. It spots and captures prey hiding behind objects. Okay. I feel like that could be used for, for mischief. Being able to have like x-ray vision. What's a good superpower, speaking of x-ray vision? I'm all over the place in this episode, I apologize. Stream of consciousness is a bubbling. But what's a good, what's a good superpower? What's the best superpower? Would you want to fly? Would you want to be invisible? How about stop time? Be super fast. Walk through walls, maybe? All kinds of good ones. I think teleportation would be pretty cool. One of my favorites is always gonna, it's always gonna be to be, be invisible. To go around people, tap them on the shoulder, and then whoop. We're gone. Could be a little... Could, you could get it to no good having a power like that. Superpowers are cool. But what about regular superpowers? You ever hear those stories of moms who see their child is in danger, potentially having a vehicle fall onto their infant or nearby? I've heard some people with the rush of adrenaline can lift a car off of their own baby. How cool is that? That sounds like a real life superpower. Another superpower? In the workspace, solving what could be handled in a meeting by sending an email. That's also a superpower. And something that not very many people have access to. So we're gonna fight this nerd. There's a lot of collectors in this area. I don't know if there's a, if that's supposed to hint that there's a lot of rare Pokemon. 
So there's quite a few level ups that you're going to be getting from here. So hopefully you're in need. You're going to get plenty here. This episode is almost entirely just battling. But I just wish that the fights that we were going to be doing were at levels comparable to our own. Like, I, like I'm not really struggling here, unfortunately. Not that I need to, but it would be a little more fun if this would be challenging. Like, I'd like to see some Pokemon maybe in, like, the high 20s. Because we just finished fighting Maylene, and the Pokemon in the gym, as well as hers, were kind of in that realm of like the high 20s, low 30s, or like almost 30s? No, we're not gonna learn Taunt, taunt Sucks. So yeah, I just wish it was, I don't know, more even. That'd be fun, right? Unfortunately, that's not what we're dealing with. Now here's something I did think about. So her... Ace Pokemon Lucario, Maylene, Maylene, her Ace Pokemon Lucario does no Drain Punch, which is actually a really powerful fighting move. It's actually better than Power Up Punch and Mach Punch. So I'm not entirely sure how long those moves will last on Monferno here. I haven't really thought about what its final move set would be. You do have options once you go to the Veilstone department store. Man, we are just leveling up like a boss right now. Feels good. But that's what's going to happen. I don't know if Drain Punch would be a good move or not. I like what I have with both of these. They both do, do something different, but they're a little bit weaker. I think Drain Punch is about a 75 power move, which is pretty useful. We like the power. We like to have a big PP. And we're just churning through these battles. We're just making it happen. See what's over this way. We haven't really been walking up through here. Looks like there's another fight. That's all this is. This is just an absolute picket fence gauntlet right now. I don't know why there have to be so many. Because they're not super challenging. I guess I'm just going to keep saying that. But at the very least, if they were going to program a bunch of fights, you know, let's make them interesting. Oh boy, here we go. We are more leveled up in this gosh dang Ponyta, but it won't leave us alone. Come on, Ponyta, get out of here. Now it's setting us on fire. If you could go ahead and stop, that'd be great. Okay. Third time's a charm. Some Pokemon actually have abilities that let you get out of battles more easily, and I do believe one of said Pokemon that is good at getting out of battles actually is Ponyta, so it's a little ironic, I suppose, being trapped by a Pokemon. So here's another Ruin Maniac. Wonder if he cares how what people think of him. Is he out for looking for unknowns too? Does he need them as well? Is he is he gonna start tweaking if he sees some unknowns? Who knows? But I'm gonna keep trying to spread the team out. All these different battles that we're gonna be doing. I might actually switch them up here in a moment because. There's quite a few battles, I'm assuming, still on the way. And I, I don't want things to get stale, you know? I want to make things interesting. So here's Shielden, once again. We've already fought one, but Shielden is the Shining Pearl counterpart to Cranidos. In our case, Craig. So that's a downer. He's got his balls hanging off of his sack right there. And he has been defeated. So we will come up here. I'm just, I completely skipped all these. Oops. My bad. Yeah, there, there's like 10 battles in this episode. This is absolutely absurd. Hopefully you guys love battles because you're getting plenty. We're not progressing the plot at all right now. But we will get to see both of the fossil Pokemon. That's pretty cool. Kind of looks like Cranidos has got a little bit of a smile on his face. That's pretty funny but I don't have anything that's really good against it. So once again, going back to Charlie, just gonna try to breeze through these fights a little bit, not trying to make this too complicated. But I will try to spice it up here by swapping the team out after this fight. After this fight. It's like when you're playing a game with one of your siblings. 
they're an older sibling in this particular example. You ask if you can play two, and then you're gonna get the age old, oh, after one more level or one more round, and it just never happens. That's never happened to me. Looks like Craig wants to learn Swords Dance. That's an interesting choice. Swords Dance is a pretty good booster of attack. Our attack's already really good, though. So I guess I'll just make it a little over the top. I don't ever foresee myself using Sandstorm. So let's go ahead and do that. If we really wanted to set up with Craig, I suppose we could do that. And instead, we'll fight a Geo dude. What a dude. I'll bring Miguel in there. Not a good type matchup. Throwing in a bird Pokemon. But these fights, I don't know. I really don't think that it matters. There's not a whole lot of strategy involved. If you could intentionally throw a Pokemon that are not good. They are at a type disadvantage like I am right now. And I'm, you know, still doing a pretty good amount of damage. Trying to make it a little interesting. Oh, as I get rid of Sandstorm, it creates one. Cool. Sandstorm is a... I mean, we've already seen it because Craig gained Sandstorm. But it's a move that alters the playing field for a few turns. And if you're not a rock type, a steel type, or a ground type, you will be at a bit of a disadvantage. Have your health get chipped away a little bit. So there we go. We're buffeted. I don't know why they chose that word. I always thought it said buffeted. You are buffeted by the sandstorm. We don't want that. So they're going to use the bronze ore of their own. That's okay. Let's get Scarlet in there. I was in the underground and I just saw kind of an opportunity to boost the team. And I want to try to show as many of the Pokemon catches as I can. But I wasn't sure if I would have an opportunity. I don't foresee myself spending a lot of time in the underground on camera on screen I should say this is not a camera but because of that I thought you know I'm gonna grab them now so I grabbed Scarlet and also whatever our weasel's name is I totally forget clearly I care a lot about my Pokemon I don't remember any of their names it's like my parents. I've never been called by my sister's name before. That's never happened. And he can't win with Pokemon he's not familiar with. Same. I mean, honestly. I mean, I can win because I'm just epic, but, you know. So let's go ahead and swap out some Pokemon. Let's go to the boxes. I love that you can do this. This is probably one of my favorite quality of life things that you can do. So we also have a Houndoom that was given to us in a trade from a friendy friend. That's nice. And let's go ahead and get Bart in there for Brandy. Let's bring Buster. Okay. Buster in there for Charlie. And Samuel can take the spot of Miguel. There we go. Some of our weaker Pokemon getting a chance to shine. How about that? I don't know if there's anything else over here. But there is a battle to the south, so we will do that as we fight this nerd. We're going out of our way to fight this nerd. So clearly, we've got a little bit of a, a chip on our shoulder. He's searching his sack for his Pokemon that are about to get destroyed. He throws out his Weasel. Feels like the game is kind of spying on me a little bit. That's okay. We actually have a couple Pokemon on the team that aren't capable of evolving without a stone. So... You will actually be seeing them in their current forms for a little while. We haven't found those stones yet, but we will eventually. We're going to get stoned and it's going to be great. We will be riding that high for a while. It's going to be awesome. So don't fret. I always remember when I played Ruby and Sapphire, how I thought... Roselia, or Rosalia, or however you say it. Roselia. It was very unassuming and kind of boring. And they did a great job with expanding its evolutionary line and pre-evolutionary line. 
We've already seen the evolution of Rosalia. Rosarade, which is great. Gardenia had that. That was her ace Pokemon. But how will we get one? No. Oh, not by fighting a random battle. I know that. But thankfully, we are able to run into the Pokemon in this game, which has the best cry in pop probably the entire Pokemon universe. It's a very effective fighter. You can teach it False Swipe. You might even be able to take out Roark just by itself. Who knows? There's an item down there, and I want it. Oh my gosh, there's another one there too. The game tricked me. And it wants to punish me by throwing more Cricketune in the way. That's okay. There's just so many fights. This is just quite the gauntlet. I don't know if I have a... I do, I did... I bought a bunch of repels, so you know what? Screw this. I know that I'm almost probably near the end of the episode. Actually, I need to look at Dig real quick while I'm thinking about it. Oh, this is Drain Punch. I haven't looked at anything. I'm doing great. Doing a great job at uh, Let's Play. Oh, we can't even learn... Oh, wait, never mind. I thought... I, for a second, I thought I had Charlie in here and he couldn't learn it. And I was like, get out of here. Get out of town. Drain Punch is an energy, energy draining punch. The user's HP is restored by half the damage taken by the target. Let's go ahead and sort by the newest ones, which are... Dig. User burrows into the ground, then attacks on the next turn. Can be used to exit dungeons. It's like a free escape rope. And then fly. User flies into the sky and then strikes its target on the next move. It's one of the Poketch hidden moves. So let's go ahead and go over to where the repels are. I bought a ton. Let's use the regular ones first. Got super and repel just. And then grab our big root. We like that. Like when people grab our big root and max potion. There's a honey tree for those inclined. I don't know if we fought this guy yet, but if not, we will. Okay, so he wanted something from Jubilife City. That's great. Nope, there are no other things left, I don't think. But we're at the Valor Lakefront, which we will explore more of next time on our way to Pastoria City. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, and I'll see you next time. Bye.